Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Sean from PlantingFire.com. I hope your day's going great. I know mine is. Welcome to the Rich Dad Poor Dad Lesson 4. The history of taxes and the power of corporations. Basically, this, this lesson starts off with a bit of a history lesson in income taxes. Prior to 1913, income tax was an opt-in only system. Meaning if you didn't want to pay taxes or you didn't feel your tax money was being used for a good reason, you wouldn't pay them. Taxes actually came up as an idea to fund the war efforts. Um, and from there, they were opt-in. However, in 1913, these income taxes became permanent due to the 16th Amendment of the Constitution. And actually, these mandatory taxes were only aimed at the top earners in the United States. Meaning, if you were a lower class or middle class person, these income taxes were not aimed at you. Which is actually a bit odd, because the middle class was um, a growing but small breed back then. There was really two dynamics of income, the lower and the upper class. However, once these funds started coming in, the government quickly realized that there was a greater need for these income taxes than they initially agreed with. So, as opposed to just targeting the top earners in the United States, they started targeting the middle earners as well. Uh, the middle class is now being impacted by these income taxes. The interesting thing about this was it was designed as a tax against the rich. Uh, the middle class was actually the ones calling for it, the lower class as well. So one thing that really separates financially independent people from those who are not is a mindset. It's almost always a mindset, whether it's not buying things you don't need, or perhaps it's Going around, the, going around the well-thought and well-formulated rules and doing something different. So what did the rich people do in this scenario? They decided to start corporations. Basically, they looked into the letter of the law and found a way that they could reduce their tax burden. And so now, you have all of these corporations that exist as tax shelters. But also, these, these income taxes are funding projects. Those projects need to be done by people. And of course, those people, unless it's a government project, are paid for and sponsored by these corporations. So now you have a tax against the rich that turns into a tax against the middle class and the rich, which the rich are no longer paying because they start their corporations. They move that money around their corporations in a way that they no longer have the same tax burden. But now also, with all of this income the government's getting, they're assigning different programs to different people. And these programs tend to go to the rich corporations. Even though they're not owned by any specific person, these corporate entities are getting this money. So by taxing the people, they started with the rich, moved on to the middle class, the rich stopped paying the taxes via their legal rights, and then the middle class basically started directly paying the rich. Super interesting stuff. So then we started talking about financial IQ, and there are four key concepts to understand when it comes to financial intelligence. And wealthy people tend to have these things pretty, pretty well down, whether it's through formal training, informal training, working with their dads at their businesses, or their moms at their businesses. It really is a perspective shift. You should know quite a bit about the following concepts. Accounting, investing, understanding markets and supply and demand, and the law. By understanding these four things, you can also have that wealthy, rich person mindset. You'll know what rules are working for you and what rules are working against you and how you can limit those liabilities from those rules that are working against you. One very interesting thing about individual payments and corporate payments when it comes to taxes is the following. Individuals, our greatest liability is our income tax. Right off the top of your paycheck, you're going to pay anywhere from 28 to 45% in income taxes. And then with what you have left over, you can go and pay your bills, um, you can go and buy your toys, but you first pay the government and then you pay yourself. Corporate structure is actually much different. Corporate entities pay their expenses, they pay their bills, they pay their people, and then with what's remaining, they have to pay taxes on that. So that's really the power and the structure of a corporation. By leveraging these tax benefits, they're able to avoid quite a bit of their income taxes. So there we are again. At the end of this lesson, Rich Dad Poor Dad is still giving me some great eye-opening details. The author's writing style is still fantastic, and honestly, if you're interested in this topic at all, I highly recommend you pick up the book. I have a link in the description below. If you buy it through there, just know it is an affiliate program, and I do get some compensation related to that, but outside of that, I really enjoy the knowledge that this book is bringing me. It's really giving me a bit of a mind shift in opening my eyes to some possibilities that I didn't know existed as far as um, tax liability, taxation, building wealth, and similar. So I'm Sean from PlantingFire.com. If you like this content, please hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I want to keep talking to you about this book, and I hope you pick this book up and talk to me as well. I love the ideas inside, and I'd love to hear your opinions. Until next time, I hope you have a great day, and take care.